Hello and welcome to another episode of It's The Vibe Podcast. You are with your host, Megan, as always. I hope your week has started off amazing. If you're listening in real time, I hope your week is going amazing. If you're listening to this later in the week, and I hope you are amazing in general. Um, I am not running off of a lot of sleep today. And for somebody who literally speaks through their complete subconscious for these podcasts. It's going to be interesting to see how this one is going to go, but you know what? We're going to work with it. I was gifted the, like gift isn't a strong enough word for what this is. This is life hack has literally changed so much for me. So I was talking in my mastermind group just around, um, you know, my energy. I had, you know, been doing massive, big, long days and I was talking about how I was so exhausted and whatever. And I was, um, Katie had mentioned to me, she said, if you are so exhausted and then somebody rings you and is like calling you to say, we're going to do the most fun thing in the whole wide world, you're going to find the energy from somewhere. So I thought about that and I was like, you know, if somebody just like rang me and said, hey, Megs, there's an F1 car sitting out the front. We're going to go for a spinner and the block in it. There's no way I would be like, oh, no, I feel like I'm a little bit tired. I'd be like, move over let me run down the stairs so yeah I have just literally been gifted this life hack where I will just think of the most fun thing I possibly can Um, I get excited about it and then I forget about my tiredness and we move on so let's see how we roll with this fun today um quick weekend update from me so Kobe was down for the weekend um I was actually meant to go out and have dinner with my friends on Friday night um but I had a last minute client issue come up so I couldn't make it um so I had to say no and I felt like absolute shit for letting my friends down um and I happened to be texting my god sister at the time and I was saying like how I was meant to go to this dinner and how like shit I felt about it and the whole thing and look she already knows that she has inspired this episode so I'm going to dive deeper into why that's significant shortly uh I didn't see 8 p.m that night again huge week I'm fairly certain I probably would might not have seen 7 30 that night um and Saturdays are now known as my being days so I don't think I saw 9 p.m on Saturday either Either, but basically my being days are because I otherwise I'll work seven days a week so the type of person I am and kind of the best ways that I come up with my creativity or the good things that fall out of my head sometimes is by getting rest so typically I will do a few bits and pieces in the morning and then after that I'm kind of like all right let's try and just do something fun or go on a little adventure or like have a nap like whatever it is that I'm feeling and that's typically my Saturday so I I, um, if you're in Adelaide, you will know the Adelaide 500 was on this weekend and I was actually given, um, corporate box tickets, which I gave up, uh, because I knew that we I had ahead of me this week and I was like, you know, what, I really just kind of need to, um, preserve as much energy for myself as I can. I have so many projects on the go at the moment. So I'm just like really trying to prioritize my time the best I possibly can so on my Saturday being day all I could do was watch the cars on KO my iPad or on my phone and I had the worst FOMO and my cousins rang up and they're like we're going if that's coming and I was like yes no yes no yes no yes like picture the Grinch when he's like deciding whether to go to Whoville for their Whoville-ation. um that was me because like yeah if it's like one of my favorite things of all time to watch so Anyway, it got the better of me. So we went for the um, race in the afternoon on Saturday. So I think I was in there for like I don't know, three hours, um, if that. So it was good to catch, up my cousin, to catch up with my cousins, hang out, and, yeah, just catch the cars going around the track. Um, I don't know how I didn't lose my voice because I was doing screaming. So that was amazing. Um, and, again, yeah, early gal that night I fell asleep bloody early. Uh, and then Sunday I really had my intention set on having an insanely productive day. Um, I actually had a 10-year memorial for my god sister's um, nana. And so, like, of all places and things and whatever, um, my nana and her nana actually um, next to each other in the cemetery. So I got to go see my nana as well, um, which obviously with my god sister comes my goddaughter. Um, my other niece and nephew were there as well so it was a really beautiful wholesome fam um afternoon it was an afternoon I was there for like an hour or so um I picked up mum on the way through and we came and then everyone was going back to the pub after for lunch and as I was walking around to everybody saying goodbye they're like you want to for lunch you come for lunch and I swear to god I said no like 15 times and it fucking sucked it was so shit 
And I was just like, no, sorry, like, go to do things. And no, sorry, go do this. And I was continuously reminded about how I can't just work all the time. Um, and yeah, it's really, really hard. So the conversation with Casey that I had on Friday night that really put things back into perspective for me was about filling up your own cup and saying no to things. So obviously this episode is called The Power of Saying No. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized I have not just started saying no to like events and things like that I'm actually saying no to things that are drainers on my energy full stop so I again will dive deeper into what I'm talking about there but I knew I had the weekend I had ahead of me and what I had to achieve and that really required me clearing out my schedule completely and going all in and laser focus and tunnel vision whatever you want to call it on what I needed and wanted to achieve so as someone who has spent the last six months beyond unclear of what the hell I was doing with myself, right? I finally have this clarity and just this like innate desire to execute the fuck out of this vision, right? So it's a completely different energy, completely different feeling. It's not like, oh, I'm going to work this week. I'm like, oh, this is the worst thing ever. I am so fucking obsessed with what I'm creating at the moment that it's like peel me away from my laptop because like, I don't know, she needs a name because she buddy comes everywhere with me. Because literally all of the creativity that's flowing through me, all the, all the ideas that are coming to me, I have to just have to capture them. So I can't be too far away from my notes on my phone or my laptop so that I can capture all of them. But six in the last six months in particular, I was always up for whatever the hell was going on. And I wanted to, like, I was always one that said yes to going out. I was always up for an adventure. Like literally anything I could possibly do to say that I was too busy to work or to do what I knew I needed to do. Actually, do you know what? I didn't even, I didn't even know what I needed to do because I was again I was just so bloody unclear so when you go from a place of what the fuck am I doing to a place of be right back just strapping myself to my laptop to bring my vision to life it's going to be an energy shift that you need to be ready for so when you have people in your life that are used to you like either reaching out being like hey what are you doing let's do something or being always the ones to say yes to doing things it is quite a shift in personal I guess we'll call it traits or your personality or your whatever you want to call it that you need to kind of like dig and tap into and be like you know what no like I can't do this for x y z reasons so on the flip side of all of this you actually don't even need a reason to say no if it's not vibing it it just gets to be a no so we all know the saying that you cannot pour from an empty cup so which is so true right we have finite energy available to us every single day Okay, so can you dig deeper and find more in bursts? A hundred percent. Like I literally just told you my life hack, courtesy of Katie. So yes, if I need to tap into some short-term little pick-me-up, little boost, um, I am, you know, having a cup of coffee and pretending that, yeah, somebody is pulling up to my driveway in a Formula One car being like, the car's yours, Max. Go nuts. (laughs) And then I'm like, oh. All of a sudden, the energy is surging, right? But that's not sustainable and it's certainly not ideal long term. Hello, burnout. Hello, whatever. You know, it just never ends well. So, noting your energy is finite, what can you say no to? So, as I said before, it's not just about like places or things or like whatever. It's like things that are energy drainers in general, right? So, I've said no more overthinking, feeling guilty putting everyone first, worrying about other people's opinions, eating shit food. So as I said, these are not specific events, but they are massive energy drainers for me, like massive. So if you think of like overthinking, like, hello, typical fucking Libran over here, that is the most indecisive bitch you've ever met in your whole life. And so for me, decision fatigue is like a whole thing. <laughs> it is like, it, is, it rules my world. So in trying to kind of eliminate the leaks of my energy into this overthinking space, I have literally just started being the most amazing decision maker. And that is for two reasons. One, I am so conscious about how much it drains me that I don't want to waste my energy overthinking everything and being like, which way to go, left or right, like whatever. (laughs) And two, I know what I can achieve when I am given a deadline or a time limit. Things will literally take as long as you give them to take. Like this morning, for example, I had like 20 minutes to get ready and I got ready in 20 minutes. Whereas like any other mornings, if I had an hour to get ready, it took me an hour to get ready. So putting those things in place for myself to not overthink or not even give myself the ability or the the opportunity to overthink has been so key. Now, guilt is the lowest vibration. (laughs) And it's just like 
like we don't do that here well I was doing that but when I start feeling guilty it's really more of like I look inward and I'm like okay cool like why am I feeling this way what about it about myself am I making this about myself it's got nothing to fucking do with me so releasing all of that guilt from every situation and I tell you it comes up in more ways than you can imagine especially for me so we're releasing that we're not doing that anymore putting everybody else's needs before mine literally anybody and I'm a sucker for this and even when I'm called out on it it's like I I still struggle to kind of like you know really do this and it's just because like my love language is like the acts of service I love to do things for people I love to be helpful I love to support people I love to be there for people I love to be that person that people come to for advice all of those things and so by doing that it puts me in the position where I am somebody that some people will come to I'll drop everything and I will you know help somebody else and I literally had an instance of that this morning that I just remembered when I was at the gym um my cousin rang me to have a chat about stuff and I was just like yeah 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 and I literally spent my whole gym session on the phone to him and yeah like as much as I love my family I've put so and my friends obviously like I put so much around making gym kind of like my sacred time and it was like oh I was needed in that moment like off I went so I clearly am not doing that as well as I thought so no just um I'm already worrying about other people's opinions so I feel like this is not unique to me I feel like this is a big thing for everybody and something that I have had to work quite a lot on um it, and again it like it comes up in ways that I just forget that it's even a thing until it comes back on and I'm just like oh my god I can't believe I did that like oh my god I can't believe that was an issue so yes we're not doing that. And even like on Friday, Thursday or Friday last week, I put a post up on LinkedIn for the first time in fuck knows how long. And it was basically on a divulge one of my clients who I was working with. And I knew that all of my old colleagues who, you know, worked at my previous job were going to see it. And for some reason, that was like a thing for me when I was like, why would I even care? Like, I'm so proud of what I've created. And it was like, what if people are like, oh, why is she working there? And like, I even got to the like spiral point before I pulled myself up of being like, Oh, what if they message like that place and tell them how should I am? Like, what the fuck, Meg? Seriously, like, let's not do that. Um, and then obviously the unhealthy food aspect of it is literally I have done such a turnaround in my eating, particularly the last three weeks, um, around really being mindful about what goes in my body in general, including words, including vibes, including energy, everything around me at the moment I'm super conscious of at the minute because I know it's a massive energy drainer for me. And I've literally am training myself and reprogramming my mind to purely focus my energy on things that are serving me only. So not things that I know I'm going to overthink and not things I know are going to shame spiral me, not things that I know are going to put me in like a whole big negative loop. Like I literally am grabbing myself the moment I'm conscious of it and being like, no, okay, cool. We're going to turn up the vibration on this shit because this is not what we do. So what could that look like for you? And uh, being the visual person that I am, <laughs> I had this immediate visual that comes to mind when I think of like energetic leaks in my life, right? Unconscious energetic leaks. So I have this visual of this bucket and obviously mine is pink. <laughs> and basically in this bucket is like this sparkly water. And that is representing your energy. Call it like energy for t- the 24 hours of your day, for example. So Every single energy leak that you have, and they could be everything that I just mentioned before or other ones, obviously, that you face in your life. And if you imagine that in, you've got all these holes in your bucket which represent those energetic leaks, right? And if you have a fuck ton of them, the energy is leaking out pretty fucking quick. So the other part to this is obviously pouring into your own cup first. Your energy is going to leak twice as quickly as you're going to be able to fill it up. Okay, so you imagine by trying to like overflow yourself and like pour into your, you know, energetic bucket twice as quickly as your energy is draining, that in itself is going to be fucking exhausting. So the best way to keep your energy in and have the most for yourself is by plugging those energetic holes, right? Plugging the leaks so that they do not literally just continue to pour and pour and pour. So as you then pour to yourself and you pour back into yourself, your energy bucket fills up quick. And instead of those, you know, like call them, you know, the things in your life that need your attention, that need your energy sitting outside of your bucket, you can actually pour from a space of overflow as opposed to like these little buckets around you trying to like hover over each of the leaks in your buckets, trying to get your energy that way. So again, if you've got this energetic bucket 
of finite amount of energy. You've got all these holes that are in there which represent energetic leaks and, you know, whether that be limiting beliefs, negative thought patterns, drainers in your life, whatever that may be, right? It, it looks different for everybody. But you imagine that flowing out so quickly that you can physically be like, oh, my God, see this. I'm draining. My energy is draining. And then you're going to quickly in your mind kind of be like, oh, no, 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 no. I can't, my energy can't be that leaky. So we're going to plug up these leaks. And not only that, we're going to start pouring back in so that everything else comes out of overflow. So when you think of your energy as the as precious a resource as it is, like it literally is so precious, you get really serious about making sure you protect it at all costs. So that is exactly what I have done. I have done a bucket order today in particular for energy leaks. So where's that shit going? Have a think to yourself, when you get to the end of, of your day, how are you feeling? And I'm not just talking like, oh my God, it's been like a long day, like I've had this on, like I'm all tired or whatever, but in yourself, in your own energy, in whatever. And again, this is coming from somebody who has had minimal sleep, who is still running on not much other than caffeine and a fucking love of podcasting. <laughs> um, so if I look at where the drainers in my life have been today, I can really quickly identify them and be like, oh, okay. Note to self, let's not do that again. Or even better, you can actually pick it in that moment. You're like, nope, 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 nope. And then instantly just patch up that leak because we don't want the energy flowing out of that particular leak in your bucket. I hope that makes sense. I hope that's a visual, like being the visual person that I am, like I just need to bring this all to life in some sort of visual way that I'm just like, okay, that's interesting. So the power of saying no to things that are draining your energy, to things that do not fill you up, to things that aren't going to make you feel good, all those things, right? That is the power of saying no, because the more you say no to things like that, and again, this will change in seasons, right? I just went through a six month season of, you know, going out every weekend and being an idiot every weekend and doing all those things that filled a particular part of my bucket, I guess, up. Whereas if I look at my business bucket at the moment, like she's running a little wordy. She's, you know, she needs filling back in. And I am just loving being back in my business and really going absolutely ham on you know my services and and what I can deliver um, particularly in pink select marketing so I really highly recommend that you do the same audit that I have just done and again it doesn't need to be physical people or places or anything like that it can literally be energy leaking activities that you do in your mind and often you'll find that they're probably the biggest trainers as well um, I know that overthinking for me was one of the biggest drainers ever. Um, and so I'm just so grateful that I've sort of come to a place where I can be like, okay, I recognize it in myself. I'm being indecisive as fuck and I just need to make a decision and we're going to move on. <laughs> so to wrap this all up, what's not the vibe for this week is giving away your energy because that shit is precious and no one and nothing deserves it unless it's coming from overflow and your bucket is full as fuck first. Um, and what is the vibe for this week is plugging up energetic leaks in your energy bucket and pouring from overflow as opposed to having to patch up some like holy ass shit on the side of your bucket where all of your energy is just leaking out quicker then you can fill it back up. So I hope you found this episode helpful. And as always, my loves, make sure whatever you're doing, that it is the vibe. Love you so much. I'll see you in the next episode.